What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2008 Audi Mark II TT. Today on the TT behind me, we're gonna be covering how to replace your front brakes and what to look out for before you do your brakes. In front of me, we're gonna be installing a set of Zimmerman rotors along with some TRW ceramic pads. Typically, these brakes are gonna last you anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles. It really depends on your driving habits. A couple of things to look for when you're considering replacing your brakes is what condition they're in. A visual inspection is always gonna be your best friend. You can take a look at them. Do your rotors look crusty? Do your pads look worn? With a flashlight, you can usually see how much meat is left on your pads. There are gauges out there that you can use to measure the thickness left on them. If you have a two millimeter thickness left on your pads or less, we highly recommend you change them, even if the light hasn't gone off yet. If you do have a brake warning light on the dash, then that is a clear symbol that you need to replace them. Another couple other things to know are sometimes under heavy braking, if you feel a pulsation in your steering wheel, oftentimes that can be warp rotors. However, don't rule aside that that could also be worn suspension components, which that will be a job for another day. Another thing you can do when inspecting your brake disc or rotor is simply doing the fingernail test where you run your fingernail across the face of the rotor. If you have a lip on either the inboard or outboard side of things, then the rotor has worn down and you're gonna to wanna to consider replacing it. We always recommend doing both rotors and pads at the same time whenever you can. Now we know the parts that we'll be installing today. Let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this DIY. And now for tools. Aside from your standard breaker bars and torque wrenches and ratchets, some of the more key important tools you're going to need for this DIY are going to be a T30 for your set screw, a 7mm hex socket for your guide pins, a 21mm socket for your caliper carrier bolts, always recommend a wire wheel or wire brush, a caliper carrier hook is important. If you don't have one of those, you can use a bungee cord or zip ties or a wire hanger, anything to keep your caliper from hanging on the brake line. Also important is a caliper piston retractor tool. This is CTA1465, which is available on fcpo.com. A large hammer, especially if you live in the Rust Belt area like we do and your rotors tend to seize to the hubs, this will make it nice and easy to get them off. Some brake lean, some liquid molly ceramic paste, and last but not least, an impact that you can use with your 17 millimeter socket to get your lug bolts off. If you don't have an impact gun, just use a large breaker bar. Now we know what tools we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. Now, as you can see, we have the hood open on the Audi TT. Now, nine out of 10 times, especially for us in the States, your brake master cylinder reservoir is gonna be located on the driver's side of the vehicle. Usually it's gonna be closer to the brake pedal. So if your pedals are on the left side of the car, master cylinder will be on the left. In some cases, you can have pedals on the right side of the vehicle with the reservoir still on the left. So just keep that in mind. But again, we're in the States, so we're talking about most US vehicles here, driver's side reservoir. Most important thing to note when looking at your brake reservoir is the brake fluid level. As your pads wear down, the piston's gonna come out more in each caliper, meaning that your brake fluid level is gonna decrease. Sometimes if you wear your pads down enough and you keep ignoring that little red light on the dash, a warning light will come on for your brake fluid being too low. So just keep that in mind before you top it off and or do a brake job. In other cases, what you wanna look out for is as you compress your pistons back into the calipers, if the system has been opened up before and the fluid level has changed, you may wanna consider removing a bit of fluid from the reservoir before you start the brake job. Otherwise, just keep an eye on it so you don't overpressurize anything and cause a leak up here. Now we have our wheel off and our vehicle secured. The first thing we're gonna do is start by removing our anti-rattle clip. Using a small flathead screwdriver, we'll go ahead and pry these off. With the anti-rattle clip off, our next step is gonna to be to head over to the back and remove the two dust caps from our rubber boots. These are gonna hold our guide pins in place. The reason for the dust cap is so no debris gets in there and the caliper can flow forward and backwards freely as you're actuating the brakes. Now we have our anti-rattle clip removed. Let's go ahead and in this case, remove our brake pad wear sensor. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it from the harness as the sensor itself is gonna come out with our brake pad. Now with our sensor disconnected, we can go ahead and work on removing the guide pins using our seven millimeter hex with a 3 8 drive ratchet. And now comes the important part where we wanna grab our caliper carrier hook, our bungee cord or zip tie, whatever we may be using, and prepare to hang our caliper off to the side. So we can go ahead and pull the caliper off. Be mindful of the outboard pad as it may fall out in some cases. 
And now we can go ahead and take our caliper, hang it off to the side, leave that old pad in there as we're gonna use it. And we're just gonna go ahead and hang it off one of the suspension coils so that way there is no tension on our brake line whatsoever. Now we have our caliper hanging off to the side. Our next step is gonna be to work on removing our caliper carrier. So for this, we're gonna grab our 21 millimeter socket and break both of those bolts free. Now we can go ahead and remove our set screw. This Audi uses a T30. In some cases, you can pull the disc off. Other times you can grab a hammer, give it a light tap, and they should break free. Now we have our brake disc off. This is where we want to inspect our hub, clean it up with a wire wheel or wire brush, and then go ahead and lubricate it with some paste so that the new rotor does not seize to the hub. Once we've gotten all the big and loose debris off of that, we'll hit it with some brake clean. And it never hurts to give everything a final wipe down before you go ahead and lubricate everything. Then from there, you want to apply your paste to keep your rotor from seizing onto your hub. You can use liquid moly ceramic paste like we are. You can use anti-seas or copper anti-seas. Anything is better than nothing, especially if you live in the rust belt like we do. Now we have our hub prepared. The next thing is gonna to be to make sure your hands are clean or as clean as possible when you're handling your new brake disc. The last thing you wanna do is get your fingerprints all over them, especially these Zimmerman coated units, as you don't wanna hit them with direct brake clean as you'll deteriorate the coating on them. So just keep that in mind. We have our rotor positioned. I have a little bit of paste behind the seat of where the set screw sits. That way the set screw has a better chance at not seizing to our rotor. Depending on the vehicle you have, you're gonna to wanna to torque these down anywhere from six to 16 Newton meters. You wanna make sure you check your repair manual before getting to that point. For today, we're gonna to go ahead and use the old calibrated wrist and just snug them down gently. After that, I like to encapsulate any set screw with some more anti-seize or ceramic paste just to keep them from seizing in there, getting any moisture behind them in the long run. Before reinstalling your caliper carrier, if it is a two-piece unit or if it's a one-piece, you're still gonna have some sort of ridge where the pads are gonna ride on. On this case, we have one right here and one right here. We wanna make sure these are extremely clean. In other vehicles, this, these are where your anti-rattle clips clip into, so just keep that in mind. You wanna make sure this is all very well cleaned and well lubricated after the fact. So, Again, using a wire brush or wire wheel, go ahead and get all the debris out of here. And then just to finalize everything, we'll hit it with a bit of brake clean. Now that our caliper carrier is all cleaned up, we can go ahead and reinstall that next. We'll go ahead and take our caliper carrier, place it back into position, and we'll get our hardware started. And then we'll grab our ratchet, we'll snug them up properly, and then we'll go ahead and torque them down properly. How many times can I say properly? You tell me. Next, you wanna make sure you torque your hardware down to the proper spec depending on your vehicle. You always want to check your repair manual when doing this. Now that our caliper carrier is installed and all torqued down, the next thing is going to be to compress the piston in our caliper so we can install our new brake pads. So let's do that. For this vehicle, we're going to use the single piston compressing tool. We're going to go ahead and unhook our caliper off of our spring coil here. Make sure you remove your hook tool as sometimes these have been left behind and you hear them jingling as you drive down the road. Using the old pad in combination with the piston retracting tool, we're gonna to go ahead and press the piston back in. In some cases, you can do this by hand, and in some situations when you're using a dual spreader tool, you can simply remove the pad and use a dual spreader tool. Now our piston's compressed. If you still have your old pad on there, go ahead and remove that. Now is a good time to inspect the seals the dust seals and dust boots on your caliper themselves. Make sure that there's no tears on anything and everything looks in overall good health. You always wanna note the pads when you remove them. Some of them have different clips on the inboard versus the outboard. Before you install your new pads, it never hurts to lubricate the face of the piston with some paste if you have that available. Before you install your new pads, it never hurts to lubricate the face of the piston or you can lubricate the tabs on your pads if they have spring clips like these ones do to bite into the inside of your piston. We'll go ahead and lubricate the outside of the piston on our case. Then we'll go ahead and install our inboard pad. And now we can go ahead and install our outboard pad at the same time. A little bit of paste on the ears of the outboard pad also help. You can go ahead and position it on the carrier. And then you can take your whole assembly 
and place it over your caliper carrier. Now you have your brake caliper situated, it's time to go ahead and reinstall the guide pins. If they are grimy, go ahead and clean them up with a wire wheel or wire brush or a light scotch bright pad. And then at this point, it is totally dealer's choice if you want to lubricate them before installing them. We like to use a little bit of liquid molly ceramic paste on these before we install them, so we'll go ahead and prep them for that. Just a light dabbing will do. And then we'll go ahead and feed them in through the dust boots. There's one. You can almost hear the thread start to engage on the carrier when you line them up properly. There's two. Then we'll go ahead and grab our hex and snug them up. Again, in some cases you may need to use a socket or a wrench if you have a regular hex head bolt and a small wrench to counter hold. With both guide pins installed, you can go ahead and torque those down. On average, these are gonna range anywhere from 25 to 35 Newton meters, depending on your vehicle. Once you have your guide pins torqued down, if applicable, go ahead and reinstall your dust caps over the boots. Now that our guide pins are secured and covered back up, we can go ahead, if applicable, and plug in our brake pad wear sensor. All right. With that in place, our next step is gonna to be to reinstall our anti-rattle clip. Next, we wanna install the anti-rattle clip. Sometimes it helps to use a small flathead or pry tool, depending on the setup that you have. All right. And with that, my good people, that is gonna conclude this DIY for front brakes on this TT. Overall, a really straightforward job. Definitely a friendly DIY at home job on the garage floor or the driveway. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today or you want to see us do a specific job on this chassis, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.